I was doing this project uh, recently and there we wanted to track the activities done by anonymous users because there's one functionality where we want to allow people to use stuff without uh, logging in. The tricky bit was to make sure that we know it's the same user if they use the app and then they come back after a few days maybe and then use the app again. So we need to make a connection between uh, the activity they did today and the activity they did they will do maybe after a couple of days. Um, and we know that um, Bubble does store a current user cookie and that current user ID stays for I think it's 24 hours. Um, but the time that we wanted to track the activity for was way more than that. Um, in this case, it was 60 days. So we had to find another way to do that. So of course, we decided to use custom cookies and here's how we did that. It's quite simple actually. What I did was I used the um, toolbox plugin to run some custom JavaScript. And um, I ran two scripts, one script to get a cookie. So say a cookie was already set on the current user's browser. This function will grab that cookie. Um, and in case that cookie's value is blank, um, there's another function that creates a cookie so that it can be read the next time the user um, comes onto this page. All right, so here's an example. I'm using the toolbox plugin and this is the um, JavaScript to bubble um, elements. I've, I've got two instances of them. So if for those who don't know, the JavaScript to bubble um, element is basically something that um, lets you pass information from a JavaScript code um, to a bubble element, to this bubble element, for example. And then the results or the data stored on that bubble element can be read um, anywhere on your bubble app. So it's kind of like a storage of sorts. So what we're going to do now is on the workflow, I've set up um, an action that runs on page load. And when the page loads, it's going to run the function that gets a cookie. So this script right here um, is basically the script right here. Um, and it's going to get a cookie. So this function is going to get the cookie uh, called viewer. That's what I'm doing here. So I'm calling this function. Uh, I'm calling uh, the function above uh, in this line. And I'm asking it to look for a cookie called viewer. Um, and now this cookie called viewer, if it has a value, it will return it here. And this will console log viewer is the value. Um, and then this thing will send that received value onto that element, onto the JavaScript bubble element. Um, so it will get stored there and then we can access it from there and do workflows and, um, you know, show it in text, etc. stuff like that. In case it's empty, it will do the same thing, but it will give us the value as a string empty. All right, so that's what's running there. Um, and every time this action runs, it gets saved onto this element's value. That's the value, the value type is text and gets stored on that value as text. Um, and I've also set the trigger event. So if that trigger event is set, I'm gonna be able to make it call this get cookie event every time that function runs. So page loads, this thing calls the function for the get cookie. The cookie is um, captured from the browser. It's stored on the element and then this gets triggered. Now when this gets triggered, I'm just doing an alert. So it's like a pop up model that just shows the value. Um, that's just for us to know what's happening. And then um, it's going to check if the value of that cookie is empty. If it is empty, it's going to actually run this, the function to set a new cookie. So page load, check for a cookie. If it's empty, we set a new cookie. If it's not empty, we display it. So that's what we have here. And that's the important part. So let's see how that works. So I'm going to open a new incognito tab. I'm going to paste the URL in and let's go. Okay, so the page loaded, it ran the on page load action and um, it did a get cookie JavaScript function and it comes up with the value empty. So it gets that here. So the cookie value is basically empty. Now, what's going to happen is that when I refresh the page, it's going to actually realize it's empty 
and it's going to set a new cookie value onto it. So let's try that. All right. So it ran this cookie value is now this value. I say, okay. So remember this. Okay. Now what's happened is it ran once it found that there was no cookie. Then it set a cookie, right? Now this cookie has been set. Now, if I refresh the page, it won't do anything. It won't change this value because it, it knows that this value has already been set. So it's going to retain that value. And now this is an incognito tab. Now, if I create a new tab here and I do this here, it's going to say that it's empty. That's fine. And then if I refresh it, it's going to say that it's set this value. Cool. And now if I close this tab and I open it again, it's still going to say the same. And if I close this tab and I come back after say 20 days, 30 days, 45 days, whatever, even 59 days, it's going to have the same value. So basically this is what we can track. Um, the the user with so say I come back after a bunch of days and then I run the get cookie and I get this value and this has been stored on the database as something that kind of uh, refers to me as uh, an anonymous user you can actually track a uh, unique anonymous users activities with this so the way I'm using it there is I'm actually storing the unique ID of a thing called viewer um, on the cookie value and then I'm just picking it up doing a database query with that unique ID value and then picking up the actual viewer that, um, you know, the current user's session references. So that way I'm able to tie the current user session to a viewer thing that's on my database and then continue tracking um, their activity. A word of caution here would be to make sure that you're not tracking any personal information like this. It's against GDPR. I think I was, uh, I saw that in the, in the comments thread on LinkedIn the other day that, you know, there's a bunch of considerations that you should, uh, take into account while setting up cookies and stuff. So please be careful with that and don't violate any privacy um, policies, etc. So hope this helps and hope this can actually help you make some really killer um, features on your bubble app. All the best.